thank you, Glenn. Uh, so sorry about that. Just trying to find the mute button. Uh, so welcome to Fun with Triple IF 2K21. This is a special bang up to date edition of the talk in which I'll be featuring uh, 27 projects in the next 20 minutes. Um, my name is Tr Triple IS and Rod Triple IS. And you may meet my more serious alter ego later in the conference, but right now, I don't care about your digital scholarship. I only care about fun, frivolity, and also being, I foolishly told the conference organizers that we'd make this really relevant for this year. So uh, we're gonna start off with, with a quick sea shanty. Museums of the world had difficulties with image interoperability Making online viewers you couldn't help but feel Every time you're reinventing the wheel We need a standard on which we all agree That can be extended to cover 3D Everyone can use it to make cool things Then share it with others Everybody wins Hey ho, triple IF Say goodbye to your image stress Hey ho, triple IF And best of all, it's free there we go. Lovely sea shanty for you, courtesy of my colleague, Gavin Mallory. So without further ado, let's launch into it. Here, first up, we've got Image Tile Puzzles. This is created by Mike Appleby from uh, Yale. And here he is silently demoing it because I cut down his uh, talk from last year, as I've done for a lot of these. You see here, you select an image. You can then drag it around as if it's one of the slidey puddle puzzles to try to reform it. And he sped it up there just so you can see how this will work. Uh, and you can do this with multiple images from their collection. Then we have the Transcriptinator. This is a project by uh, myself and my colleague John created for uh, the British Library's arcade machine. In this, we feature uh, transcripts from the Qatar Digital Library. And you have to use the joystick to control it and pick out any ones that are mistranscribed by the OCR software. Uh, given that there are over 2 million pages in the library at the moment, then it will take quite a while to get to the end of this game. Then we have the David Rumsey map tab. So this was created by Jack Reed from Stanford. Uh, and you can see him demoing it here, uh, opening up Chrome. And each time he opens a new tab, a new map from the collection is loaded up and it's overlaid with the time. It's also zoomable, so you can zoom in. In a similar vein, much more recently, new entry for this year, we have the Art Institute of Chicago Art tab. So here, this is me. I have it installed on my Chrome browser. When I add a new tab, each time I do so, it loads a different collection artwork from their API. And if you click on it, then you get taken through to the equivalent item in their online collection. What do we got next? We have Triple F Gallery created by Stephen Fraser from Digerati. This is a 3D experience just using HTML canvas, but in which you can zoom in on the, in great detail on these Triple F images. But when you zoom out, what you see is a faithful recreation of a gallery, including floor, wall, and of course, the wall labels for the art. Uh, here we go with some jigsaw puzzles. So this isn't strictly triple F, but given that it's such fun, I thought I'd feature it anyway. Here you can see myself downloading a triple F image, um, the same one used for the image tile puzzles, uh, but it could be any triple F image downloading it and uploading it to jigsawexplorer.com. Um, it will then, once you've picked the file and upload it, uh, create you a lovely online jigsaw puzzle that you can do to amuse yourself. So all of the tiles arranged around there and then you have to move them into the right place and clip them together. Another project from my colleague, John, for a hack day. This one's Open CCTV Dragon. Uh, this is a nefarious system that allows you to spy on the movements of other people on the web. So this is the control room in which we can see two images there. Those images are actually innocent viewers who have come to the website and are looking at different Zoomable artworks online. And as they move these around and zoom in on different regions, then the controller back in their control room can see exactly what's going on. And so unwittingly 
they tell him everything. Uh, then we have a project from Ben Alberton from Stanford, Medieval Maker Word. So in this project, uh, he has taken one of the manuscripts from the Walters Art Museum, uh, one of the illustrated manuscripts and extracted all of the different illuminated letters available there. And so you have a palette of all the letters of the output, or at least all the ones that are featured in the manuscript. I think there might be some letters missing. Uh, and using the HTML drag and drop API, you can then combine them up top and form words of your choice. Uh, project from Jack Reed from Stanford, the old map room. Now this is uh, interesting because it's not for, uh, not for computers, but in fact for your television, it's an Apple TV app. And what it does is it will load up uh, David Rumsey map collection maps and very slowly, this is sped up in this version, but slowly zoom and pan around using a Ken Burns effect to effectively turn your television into a lovely map displaying device that can be on in the background. Uh, great project from uh, Leander Seiger, one of the conference sponsors. Uh, this is Exquisite Corpse. So here we have a system where you can load up lots of different artworks uh, that have been catalogued according to different parts of the face. And you can mix these all together to create a three part mashup of a different face. And each part of this is extremely controllable. You can load in different images, just to, um, one part. You can zoom the group as a whole. You can individually zoom and reposition each layer until you create the perfect invented face composed of other faces. Uh, this one, going 3D, 3D Trade Cards Explorer. So this is a collection of 19th century trade cards from the Boston Public Library. And uh, my colleague, John White, took these and uh, put them into 3D. So this is an in-browser experience, but it also works with Google Cardboard for extra immersion. Uh, and you are thrown into space, but it's a space full of trade cards so you can zoom in on these things uh, you can also go right through them and look round the back and then you see what's written on the back as well but no time to show you that because we're moving on to fractals so created by sean martin this is as far as i know the only programmatic implementation of triple if where he's used maths to create a fractal uh, and you can zoom in to an incredible degree. Uh, it, this features over 25 billion pixels. So it's a proper terapixel image uh, and it only breaks down once it hits the limits of Open Sea Dragon's maths. Then we have the Esper machine. This is a voice controlled interface and there is a video. So here there's some sound. Enhance 23 to 34. This is me recording it earlier on um, this picture Stop. here. Stop. Tom Kramer, pan left, uh, with a few, you know, pan left, 2021 related memes. Stop. Hard copy. It's a little temperamental. Hard copy. When I say hard copy, it will, the second time, uh, actually load up your print dialogue and allow you to print out the image that you've just zoomed in on using only your voice. Uh, then we have the World War I wall created by Ichta Daniels from the National Library of Wales. This is actually a video of a system that's on a massive 80 inch touchscreen monitor. And it's a great example of Open Sea Dragon collection mode. So lots of images all loaded uh, into the same zoomable space. Uh, and all of this is running locally off a small standalone computer that's attached to the back of the machine so that visitors can interact. Uh, then we have something we call slow looking, um, which we created here at Cogat originally for the Clifford Still Museum of Art um, to display on their website. But uh, we've created a standalone version that will work with any IIIF image. So here we've uh, loaded up an image from the Art Institute of Chicago and you can see what it does is deliberately, very slowly zoom you into uh, the image until you're very close up. 
and then it moves along and pans around in a, a, a very slow zigzag around to create what we hope is a contemplative experience. And again, something great to have on in the background, just floating along there. Uh, here we have a, a project called Story Quilt. So this was created by people from the Welcome Collection in London, uh, along with uh, programs from Digirati. And this is to uh, exhibit a physical quilt that formed part of their exhibition to exhibit it online. So here, as you move around, you can zoom and pan, but also uh, move through and see the captions for each of the individual panels on that quilt. And cleverly, it also rotates it as it goes. Uh, this is another project from Leander Saiga and his daughter Matilda. It's Cover Boutique. And this is a way to create bespoke cases for your mobile phone. So in the middle there, you select your phone model, You've, that's your canvas. And then what you can do is effectively load up any IIIF uh, resource, but there's also a few that are pre-supplied there. And using the suite of tools um, on the left and right and below, you can then go and create a composite image to create your own custom phone case. Here's a project called Art Forest from Jeff Stewart from Harvard Art Museums. I'll let Jeff do talk. the collection and as we page through, we can annotate those images and then we can cast those annotations off to a simple tree generator. A tree generator is rendering some L systems or is rendering an L system to make these trees. So you have triple F collections feeding in from the collections interface of our public website. The interface here is parsing the collections, parsing the manifests, loading the images from the Neutral Life image server, giving users an option to annotate or select sections of them, which are essentially annotations, and those annotations are handed off to the tree generator to grab the necessary fragments from the Neutral Life image server. So there we go, a beautiful generative art project. Uh, then we have Anona by Nikki O'Neill from NCSU. Um, in this project, there's a, sorry, I need to get the video started. Uh, we can see a, uh, a diff, lots of different uh, storyboard views of annotated IIIF images. So this is the first one, which is a storyboard view. It shows you all the different annotations that have been applied to that image and gives you a variety of ways to see them. Uh, but there is also uh, this version, which is the range viewer that will allow multiple images uh, that form a manifest to be displayed side by side. And finally, this one, which is great, the multi-story board viewer, which actually allows simultaneous comparison of different images side by side. Uh, then we have something for kids, uh, Animal Crossing by David Newbury from the Getty. Uh, it's a very short clip, but hopefully you'll see what happens. You select a painting, you can select your exact crop on there, and on the right-hand side, you can see a tiny pixelated version of it uh, that can then be directly imported into Animal Crossing uh, using the QR code there to insert that image. Uh, next up, a project I did for a hack day in London called Infinite Zoom. Oh, look, again, it's a picture of Tom Kramer and the Ever Given. As you zoom in to ridiculous detail, then it will try to pick out images that have the same colour as the exact pixel you're looking at. So these images, there's 21,000 uh, unique colours sourced from around 80,000 images from archive.org. And you can see as I zoom in on different color, we'll see if it picks up uh, other ones that are also not, color matching algorithm, not so great there, but you get the idea that you can go right in, right out, and then pick any image, any pixel, and find more images of that color. Uh, next up, another project from Jeff Stewart. Uh, this is Super Collager. And 
And here you see direct manipulation of the images on the cutting mat. I'm clicking through a bunch of images and highlighting areas of interest. I like that eyeball, I like that eyeball, I like this uh, branch from a plant in this as well, and maybe one down here. And uh, I'm gonna go check out this other image, and uh, yeah, I like this little thing here. So clipping, clipping, clipping. And uh, as I do that, the cutting show up on the artboard. This is the second screen. This is the canvas where I can start making stuff. So everything I, everything I clipped, I can start putting to use immediately. And uh, my artistic skills were not really running very deep the day I made this. So uh, my default is to make funny faces, and, and therefore that's what you get to see. Uh, here there we go, a lovely two screen experience. On to stories. So this is a way to create and annotate uh, images. My colleague Andy here is explaining it, but effectively here we have a very detailed uh, art map of London. Um, this is an underground map of London. And what you can do is zoom in on the region that you wish to describe, add an annotation, uh, and then store those there, then move to a different region. And once you've done that, what you're able to then do is to go and display those as a, uh, to um, users as in a simple interface where they just click next, next, and can move around to see regions of interest of the painting or uh, whichever image in question. Uh, new entry for this year, it's Miriarama. So uh, this is created by Ben Alberton from Stanford. Uh, here we have it. This loads up different Miriaramas um, and it takes different panels from them. And each time you hit build a new scene, will generate a new landscape from the original uh, cards that these were sourced from. Another new entry for this year, we have uh, movie maps by Garrett uh, Nelson and Garrett will be giving a detailed talk about this during the map session later today. But for the moment, I have just uh, created a small screen recording to show how it works. Um, as here we go, uh, I'll let Garrett talk in the background as he talks then the map will move around in sync with his audio to particular points. But at the same time, I'm free to navigate. So I'm there freely navigating at the bottom, looking at the map. Uh, but if I just stop, then as he mentioned certain features of the map, it will zoom in and even load in other images. If I want to stop and explore those images, I can pause the video and then just move and pan around. So another great project there. Uh, next up, another new entry. This is Art GIF, uh, created by my colleague Matt Chapman and myself. And this is using the Art Institute Chicago API to create animated GIF. So on the left, we see a palette of images. I can click things like random images, or I can type in a search. So in this case, I'll try to get myself some coins. You see those loads in there. As I click on any of those images on the left, then they get added to the film strip. I'm just going to remove their, the default ones. That's the one I wanted. If I click on another one, I get a second coin. I may want to go and move that around to be more framed more correctly, and then remove any frames that I don't want. And on the right hand side, you can then see the final result, an animated GIF there, which you can just right click to download and below it, the list of credits. So that if you want to explore the collection objects, you can. Uh, moving forward, but finally, the last thing I'd like to say is you don't need any fancy tech as proved by Kelly Davis from the Getty, where she simply placed two images from two different collections side by side in Mirador and captioned them as follows. Hey, hey, sup, sup with you. The two Gainsboroughs talking across country. So thank you for your attention. Um, most of these projects are featured on the uh, AAA, awesome IIIF list in the experiments and fun. There's also last year's deluxe edition that actually allowed the presenters to talk themselves instead of me talking over. And finally, 
A big thank you to Gavin for creating these shanties. I'm now going to play you out with the 12 inch dance remix version of it. Uh, feel free to sing along, but be warned, there are flashing images. Museums of the world had difficulties with image interoperability Making online viewers you couldn't help but feel Every time you're reinventing the wheel We need a standard on which we all agree That can be extended to cover 3D Everyone can use it to make cool things Then share it with others Everybody wins Hey ho, triple IF Say goodbye to your image stress Hey ho, triple IF And best of all, it's free Thank you, everybody.